And speaking of that, we are now live. Thank you everybody for uh, tuning in to the video on demand or for the no yep. people who are here. Welcome. Since there are no people here. Oh. Uh, anyway, uh, let me post uh, my uh, note real quick here. Yeah. Also, uh, Discord streaming thing. Yes, Discord streaming is very important. And yes. That's that way I'm not... A that, uh, that way, they, uh, everyone but you isn't a few seconds behind uh, you. Oh, you don't want to try and comment with like a five second stream delay? Yeah, that might be a bit difficult. I mean, if we're trying to comment with a five second stream delay, we just uh, figure out whenever HP is streaming next and comment over that stream. We seem good on the dropped frames. Looks like that one time we had bad frames was just uh, an isolated incident. Knock on. Oh boy. Now knock on wood. Now, granted, we can't blame it on um, anyone else accessing your internet, at the least. Yep. At the very least. Okay. So, with all of the pageantry and grunt work done with, welcome back to Trails in the Sky. Legend of Heroes, Part 2, The Revenge of Ku Chapter 6 of the Hoops Barkley Saga. I am your host, Some... the Krampus. And I am still Vincent. Just Vincent. So, when last we left, uh, we were introduced to Estelle and Joshua... Uh, Estelle is a typical JRPG protagonist to the hilt. She is good with the staff, she casts magic, and she has the memory span and brain of a potato. Uh, Joshua is basically Sasuke with the serial numbers filed off. He is a, uh, lonely and brooding boy with a troubled past. However, unlike Sasuke, he's not a complete asshole to people around him which makes him infinitely more likable. I'm just running back to heal up. I ain't paying 20 gold per night for a uh, room, but I can go down here and use this bed for free. Understandable. Uh, so, we became bracers, which are basically handymen slash gophers slash your typical fantasy world adventurers. And we've been doing menial fetch quests for everybody in town. Our father was called away on urgent business, and there are talks of war happening. But surely such things will never come to this peaceful, idyllic mountain village of... Relent. Calling this a city is genuine. Is, uh, very generous. In fairness, calling anything a city in an RPG is kind of generous. Yeah. Mostly because in order for it to not be um, absolutely batshit insane to walk through, they basically have to give you a small slice of uh, well, area yeah. that happens to have, like, everything in a very condensed space. Well, yeah, I mean, like, even the Outer Worlds does that, where uh, you have, like, these villages that are supposedly much larger than they actually are, but for the sake of actual gameplay are small-ish little hovels. Yeah. An unusually diverse small town. With specialists that you would think a small town would not actually be able to support.
the mines. Certainly there is nothing dangerous in the mines. Orbs. I'm trying to remember where the mayor is. Uh, that's a good question. I'm going to guess not in the clock tower. I'm going to the clock tower anyway. Uh, if only they actually labeled things on this map. Maybe that blue building? So I'm going to guess he's in the town you're currently in. Oh, okay, he gets his own place off to the side. Ah. Also, the camera has moved. Yeah. There the camera go. does not help. The mayor's residence. The mayor's residence cutscene. Sorry, just pulling over any other window so we can see the chat. Ah. I don't already have it pulled up, but yeah. Mayor Klaus. The the stereotypical like little JRPG sprites we've got with the full beard over it is adorable. <laughs> yeah, fa the facial hair on like sprites is always uh kind of interesting looking. Basically, like, everyone is wearing fake beards. Oh, there's a safe in his room. Yep, that's a serious ass safe. There's equal chances that it's there as a plot point or to be decoration. The treasure chest, on the other hand, is to be looted. Because JRPG. Yep. I'm guessing we come back here to loot it then. Possibly. Better we never interact with this place again. Uh, I mean, there's one on top of that bookshelf as well, so it's entirely possible it's actually just meant to be decorative. Yeah, but the other one's at Thieven Height. And there's another one up here in his, uh. There are like attic. three up here. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Weird. Yeah, it's entirely. And right there. It's entirely possible it's there just to be decorative or to drive uh, the player insane with uh, treasure chests they can't open. I can do a quick search around the building here. Nope, it's just the mayor's house and a bunch of dirt. More than likely, unless they hit something in the trees. Okay, so we're going back up that horrible path to the mine. Good chance to get some more grinding in. side quest, right? Nope, this is the main quest. We've already done all the side quests. Ah, that's right, we finished all the side quests last time. Yeah. Figure out where we are. Uh, we are on getting the Septium from the Magda Mine. 
It's the request from Mayor Klaus. Or Malga Mine. Yep, keep going forward until you hit the crossroads. Then head right and go straight up. Yeah, right. Right. We're, heading, we're heading to the mine. I've been there once before. Yeah. Yeah, I pulled up a walkthrough just... Yeah, definitely useful. Because, yeah, it's a JRPG. He does have his craft that does more damage. Yes, but the craft costs 20 points of... Uh... 20 points that we keep building up anyways and not spending. I mean, at this point, it's not really much of a... Waste at least half the time, especially in an encounter where you have, like, more of these guys, like a swarm of them, and killing them quicker is probably better. I mean, when you're only encountering, like, one or two, yeah, it's probably not worth using, but when you have, like, three or more of them, getting through them faster is probably more worth the trade-off.
Oh no. Okay, so. Is there a refresh point near here? No. What'd you do? N nothing. I'm still standing at the entrance. Okay. So, facing north. Uh, pull the lever and ride the cart. Lever? Ride the cart. It'll lead you to the next floor. Yep. Yeah, that's an all better. Okay, it's locked. Uh, you need a key for the elevator, so you need to backtrack and pull the lever. Why the hell did the guy tell me to do this? Probably, be no, <laughs> it's probably because we have to know that we need the key ah. for the elevator, so we still have to touch it once, then go back, then throw the switch, then go back then, this way. And then the key will spawn, yeah. Yeah. You're, yeah, you're probably right on that. Uh, talk to the miner, he'll give you the key. Yes, so that's exactly it. <laughs> Why game? <laughs> well, that was dumb. Let's go down to the next floor. Be nice if they just let me walk over. Like, this minecart is not long. That, no, it's. That's wasteful. Actually... It is. Completely wasteful. But they made this my car, so god damn it, you're gonna ride it. <laughs> uh, on the second floor, head south. You see a recovery panel. We are going to north and going south. No, south is a. Uh... Oh, never mind. There it is. Yeah. Aha! You're being pulled by the dungeon dressing. Yep. All right. So first off, before we do anything else. Yep. Save because this thing is unstable as hell. Uh, keep going south until you see a dude. A dude? Save the septum crystal. <laughs> Potato brain! <laughs> Didn't we determine, like, in an earlier plot that this thing attracts monsters? Yes. I was just okay. about to mention that. Okay, now she's put it in her pocket. It's specifically <laughs> the light from it attracts monsters. As long as it's, like, in a pocket or something, they're fine. Well, at the very least, it explains, uh... Oh no! An earthquake? A cave-in? Oh no, a crab! Behold, we have a miner in our party. Does he do anything, or is he just dead weight? Yes. 
I'm not sure which. We'll figure it out. <laughs> and yes, behold, killer crabs. Dead weight, got it. Yep. Our job to make sure he doesn't die. Or something. Yeah, that's easily worth the 20. Whichever one's at full. She had more useful generic crafts. Yeah, me too. I'm hoping she gets one next, because she's already got two buffs. Yeah. <laughs> like in random encounters, buffs are of questionable use at best. They're great for boss fights. Especially when the boss has to walk over you to hit you to begin with. Okay, now that we've gotten all the treasure on this map, uh, need to rescue workers on this floor for return position, move east. Whoops. Yeah. At least he auto heals. No, that was a turn thing, I think. Oh. Oh, that's right, those exist. Yes. Uh, from the looks of this, there's no boss at the end, so... There's Minor Bones. Yep. And Minor Trent. East, West, Northwest. These are all going to be basically the same idea. Fight crabs, rescue miners. Murder that guy in particular. hope all of them aren't separate NPCs on the field. Probably not, because we're talking PS2, and at a certain point, uh, there's just more than it's going to want to render. Like, it just does not have the processing power for that many characters. Yeah. On the other hand, it would be goddamn hilarious. Unfortunately, it's more hilarious in a concept way than in actually playing it outside of a way. <laughs> okay, no, they're just run back up. Got it. Thank goodness. So, yeah. And there's the other two. Oh, uh, there's look, there's one more after. Not 
dropped a rock on him. It was a big rock. They just fucking really hate Joshua. Apparently most enemies just really hate Joshua, it seems. Oh, come on. Fraction of health, apparently. Literally one health point left. Yeah. not have a philosophical argument down here in the mine? It's like, it's like one, of, one of our D&D games where uh, <laughs> run into a major NPC and then just start talking amongst ourselves uh, something completely inane. So there should be like one more to the northwest. Mm -hmm. Whatever the hell northwest means around here. Well, on the bright side, one of them is chasing the, uh, miner. So you might as well just kill the ones next to you while that everyone chases the miner. You can totally play the role of tank. Yeah, that seems to be working out fine. I mean, they're the only things, things to, uh, in here whatsoever, so from the looks of it, there isn't a boss fight. There we go. Miner and trading. Yep. He has a miner and mining. Honestly, I'm actually surprised at how few mine puns we've made so far.
is giving us a lot of Septic, though. Which is good. Yeah, we need a lot of Septic for unlocking slots. Yeah. Probably also heal between, or, well, immediately, basically. Yep. Smooth, dude. Totally not a lie. Well, you see, his name is just Minor in Training. He's actually just been here for like 20 years. First thing we're doing is uh, once we get back into town is gonna give uh, another blue HP up to Estelle because if she's gonna be tanking stuff and using her uh, taunt, I want her to have more HP. Plus, she can get more of the Aqua abilities, like the better heal. Yeah, which can also help. I think I'm just gonna turn her into straight caster and have Joshua be the the. Uh... Well, nobody's going to be a straight caster yet. Yeah. But, because we only have two people. Yeah. Yeah, just see how things work out. Yep. We have no... You have, like, one accessory, don't we? Yeah, we only have the white bracelet. It's on her. Yeah. Can't go up that way. Yeah. Uh, after, uh, head back to the first floor, uh, then back to the Maris house, so we're basically done. Woo! Minor bones! Ha <laughs> ha! It was a ruse the whole time. You thought we were going to make you do another fetch quest. Nope, instead of a fetch quest, we're going to make you do a match three puzzle. Sliding tiles.
bugs. Monsters are full of candy. Hit them with the stick. Man, this Viva Pinata reboot got really violent. It's always been violent. I mean, technically, yes, but Pinatas. Viva Pinata, go the fun. Oh, I should see if it's on the Xbox Game Pass for PC. Seriously, we're just gonna find their nest or something. God damn it, Joshua. Uh, that thing's the size of a small car. It's like a tricycle. Uh, it's on the Xbox. Game, uh, uh, Xbox Game Pass, but... Oh. console only. Dang. Oh well. We cannot indeed uh, do ethically, ethically questionable things to pinata life on the PC. That's reserved for consoles. For filthy, filthy consoles. They're talking about war again! Getting flashbacks to Valkyria Chronicles. Remember, we're proud knights of freedom. <laughs> well, that never implied anything about intellect, so it's not entirely false.
at the very least, I am impressed by the Bracer's PR department. I'm going to guess that's where they put most of the money into. Sure as hell ain't new equipment for, uh, or equipment for new recru recruits. Eh, I can talk today at some points. Look, Bracer is basically like the Uber or Postmates job of the fantasy world. You supply your own stuff, you get a cut of the profits from the job. <laughs> Thank you, Joshua, for pointing out the important things. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to put it in my big safe. Which apparently is animated to open up. That's the most well animated thing in the entire village. This certainly won't come up later, thanks to this happening during a side questy thing that's actually a main quest. No, this is actually a main quest. We get our main quest from the same place we get our uh, side quest. Oh, oh, I know. It's just that it actually feels no more relevant to the plot than the other side quests did. You should stay a while, Josette. I haven't even told you about the part where we choose one person to hunt for blood sport every year. To honor our filthy and diseased gods. Long and terrible is their plagued reign. I'm sure I won't become a party member in the future. You mean this character with a unique sprite? A unique sprite, unique uh, portrait. I mean, granted, not Can everyone with a unique portrait actually becomes a party member. Usually just means they're more important to the plot than uh, just being side characters. talking about Joshua's love life, it never goes well. Eh, it can't be that bad. Look, the last time we talked about his love life before this, we were talking about why doesn't he find us, his adopted sister, attractive. This game got weird. You would think that would be self-explanatory. Thirty-two. Yep. I mean, Bee Nosy is also one of those, uh... Yeah, she's got protagonism. Yes, exactly. I've heard of the liberal news, alright. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be an oncoming or a recurring thing for this. Of course it is. Uh, I made the joke last time, too. Yes. <laughs> Ooh. 
So yeah, before dealing with the liberal news, there is a couple side quests. Yep. Let me go grab those. Yep. Lost, Lost Cat. Yep. And the Rhino Cider. <laughs> First. We got orb stuff to do. Ah, uh, orbs. So can we unlock slots? Unlock this slot for Joshua. Now it becomes more of a question of what do we have, what do we need, and what does it do? Stuff we're already carrying around. And first yeah. off, for you, anything else, files, save. Yeah. Save. And crash and roll save, corrupt all your saves. <laughs> Don't joke about that. <laughs> Alright, so what. Oh, we have that information. This is also useful. Perceive the enemy status. Another defense. Considering how often he gets attacked. Joshua. Oh. Can't install two ah. at the same time, of course. Ah. So you can't install two identical ones. That makes some sense. Yeah. And that's the only uh, Earth type. Similarly, you're going to have trouble getting more H. Yeah, so you can't put our HP on uh, what's her name either. Wow, we can actually convert. No, we can uh, sell Septa just like we could at the other store. Ah, uh, okay. It's just strained like that. Yeah. Ah, yeah. I think you would just put that under sell.
totally buy tons of flour. Yep. Ingredients to cook with? Yeah. The, uh... Wholesome pasta takes five milled flour. Ah. So a little oil and beef peas, flesh. Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah. Thus, now we can cook pasta. Now, this one we can't eat in battle. We can only eat outside. But mm. this heals everyone's HP. Okay, so fairly useful anyways. Yeah. Buy a few more olive oils. Buy a few olive oils, buy a few Popeyes, buy a few Plutos. Life's rough, buddy. Fried those maple cookies. Well, like you know. Carnies. Considering okay. we're frying. Considering we're doing it like just in the middle of the street. Yeah, it's accurate. Please meet me on the cafe terrace. Yep. So go meet her. I'm surprised someone as handsome as you is a gopher. <laughs> this is a weird conversation with us. Yes. Okay, we need to leave. Find an adult. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure if I can trust this woman with cats. Alright, go to the clock tower. Uh, head north. Oh, don't go in the clock tower. Got it. Yeah. Should trigger an event somewhere. Uh... 
The vagaries of head no uh, north to trigger an event. Hmm. This is a weird conversation. <laughs> yes. I like smelling jet fumes. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta get out of this well, town. This town is weird. The fact that he likes smelling jet fumes does explain why he's conversing to us about how he likes smelling jet fumes. There we go. Yep. Kitty. Right, to the general store. The general store? Mm hmm. I got turned around. There we go. Right, then the alley between the guild and the chapel. Then, go in the chapel, repent for your sinful lifestyle, and retire from being a bracer. I apologize for nothing. <laughs> ah, you have cornered a cat. It certainly couldn't just jump down from here. And totally wouldn't have panicked. Behold our character flaw, bad with animals. acting, but no one else did. I need oh. an adult! <laughs> <laughs> Ida. Ida, please. Ah, uh, Jen, even if the cat was Mewtwo, it would be no match for its owner, unfortunately. You know those type of characters. Alright, there'll be a short break. Well, just Vince entertains you as I go and uh, use the restroom. I'll be right back. Right. Well, let me think of something to entertain you. Yeah, I got nothing. Instead, listen to this the sweet, tranquil music in the background. Sweet, sweet, tranquil town music. Performed by townies. I'm just assuming that the, that the town music for every RPG is uh, the random townsfolk that you don't see on screen playing instruments and or humming and or whatever. 
it is very important that, you're, uh, that you have a band playing music all the time in your town, especially the same song over and over again. It's of vital importance that you hide them for adventurers to make sure they can continue playing said music over and over again as well. Thus is the life of the uh, off-screen off uh, NPC. Playing the same song over and over and over again. Never ending. Never stopping. Never sleeping. So yeah, so enjoy the tranquil music. The tranquil music and the slave labor. If only, Jen. It's really just the town's version of welfare. They have so many specialists that uh, most of the time won't actually have anything to do, considering the uh, incredibly low population and how much demand do you have for stuff. I'm back. Hey. Well, you're the the ridiculous bread prices is uh, the consequence of them having way too much specialization with a small population, so the farmers can charge whatever the hell they want because there's actually a very scarce supply of bread. I assume that most of the population actually subsists by eating mostly dirt. Or their instruments every once in a while. Or occasionally snaring pigeons. Or occasionally snaring the pigeons. There's also an inordinate amount of pigeons. Okay. So there's a being called the Rhino Cider here on the highway that we need to Rhino Side. That or most of the town is actually composed of hunter gatherers. There's actually very little farming going on. Either that, they've learned how to subsist off the light from uh, Septum Crystals. Uh, can you tell me where the monster's supposed to be? Uh, yes. Let me read exactly what this says. You can take oh, your never mind. On... It's right there. All right. Well, we've saved already. Uh, yeah. Uh, if you're a relatively low-level monster, hits extremely hard. Uh, prioritize fire arts to deal massive damage. Got it. Along here. That's damage. Okay, so hopefully she doesn't die. Okay, go ahead, he attacked her. Heal off? Oh, uh, you have items, actually. Yeah, I got items. We're good to go. A whole sandwich. Ah, oh, the fine art of one person eats while the other one hits him. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay, he's alive. Septif up on that one too. Oh. 
That's nice. Hey, and Estelle okay. lived through a boss fight! Amazing. Ah, oh, that got us 13 Earth Crystals. Actually, even the Septum would make a lot of sense, because that really would make it a hunter-gatherer society, and still let them basically sit in one place, considering the giant abundance of monsters everywhere. It's either that, or they turn full Monster Hunter and base their entire uh, economy and way of life off of monsters. Yeah, it's effectively the same thing as eating the Septum, because the Septum basically drops from monsters. Well, no... Uh, Septum's mostly mined. Uh, Septif, the unrefined, like... Or Septif, yeah. Yeah. The unrefined stuff is what drops from monsters, so that's right. Yay. Actually, akin to that one isekai, the manga, the... Because for some reason, well, I like fantasy as a genre in general when it comes to manga, and in inevitably you're going to read a shit ton of isekais. But in one of them, uh, the actual like food is pretty much provided ex exclusively by monster kills. There are no um, livestock, or at least the meat, rather, because there's not much of a point. Because apparently, monster meat is tasty, in spite uh, logically that shouldn't actually be the case. Generally, muscle mass does not actually make for good eating meat, which is why we don't. It's why we eat herbivores a lot more, or, or it's why our, our livestock generally consists of herbivores and not carnivores. That and carnivores are almost self defeating when it comes to that cycle, but. Yeah, exactly. Predators tend to be gamey. Predators or herbivores that just move around too much. Basically anything that gets too much exercise. shopping. Mm, that one we can't contribute to the protagonism. Oh, no. Uh, not Estelle, the person she was talking to. There's a ah. mom and son who are on pilgrimage. Okay. On pilgrimage? Have we got an explanation for that? No. The kid says they're on pilgrimage. She says they're going to Bose next. You buy lots of stuff from the Bose market. Okay. We're at the Hotel Relent. Oh, okay. We have to talk to the guy in the front. The bar. Yeah, as a matter of fact, I think the explanation for why the monster meat was so tasty was specifically because it has magic in it, and magic is apparently tasty. Mm. I'm guessing magic tastes like bologna. It pre-deep fries the meat. Wow. 
town's not that big. How does no one know us? We do actually live nearby. Well, this guy's from out of town. Fair enough. Classy. Oh my god, there is so much wrong with that sentence. <laughs> Holy shit, we're gonna start with I don't think Estelle is uh, 18 yet. I believe they mentioned she's like 16. I think they're both 16. Yeah. But glossing over that, because Japan. We're not glossing over that, we're just realizing that this is happening. Japan. I mean, no, I mean, even glossing over that because Japan, this is still creepy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Isn't she in a skirt, actually? Uh, yeah, she's in a shirt, a skirt and shorts. Okay, so both. Yeah, she's wearing, like, the the shorts kind of thing. Yeah. Which I will give them point, like, again, one of the things I have to give this game points for in comparison to other JRPGs is for giving the female lead a practical outfit for her job as a gopher slash mercenary. Semi-practical, I mean, the lack of physical protection in certain areas is questionable. Well, but, I mean, uh, she's she's very clearly built for, like, agility and staff wielding. Yeah, there's that but, at like, least. Joshua, who is a knife fighter, very clearly has armor pauldrons and stuff. Uh, yes, Jen, he did effectively say drop your shorts to a miner. Mm-hmm. I'm telling you, if we had a head for it, we could spend 30 minutes just dissecting how that one sentence is wrong. So yeah, do that thing. Go to the Orville Factory. Yep. Also, we are totally letting this guy get eaten by wolves and bugs. Oh, absolutely. He is now the party tank. Involuntary party tank. And is actually less useful than his assistant. Here's something that broke while I was getting my ball up, my think repaired. <laughs> yep, 
Yeah, he's pretty nice to work under, other than all that quid quid pro quo. Yeah, I'm I'm getting some real uh, Sid from FF7 slash Shara vibes from these two, and that's not yeah. a good thing. <laughs> Their sprites are no smaller or bigger than yours, Niall. <laughs> they are a very similar amount of pixel. Actually, um... Considering the uh, twin pigtails, this Jeep probably actually has more. Remember, in a JRPG, it's perfectly valid to include your hairstyle in your height. Yes. That's why Cloud is a full six inches taller than he probably should be. Okay. Oh, uh... We're going to the tower. Yes. Yeah. Do you know where the tower is? Uh, yeah. We went to the tower once before. Good. I'm say uh, I'm asking because the guy doesn't specifically explain now where the tower is, so I assumed it was something we'd headed to beforehand. Yep. Oh! So he'll run away. She'll use her camera to blind enemies. Wow, she's automatically useful. Yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. And the game crashed. <laughs> Technical difficulties. <clears throat> well, uh, we'll be right back after these messages. I wonder how far back we're. I definitely saved after we beat the beetle. After so we're probably a lot of skeezy dialogue to pass forward. A lot of skeezy dialogue, yeah, because it's right after we beat the beetle. Yep. Oh boy. Right. So while we're replaying through this part of this uh, game again, uh, you need to heal. Um, what's his face? Or you get attacked by literally anything, probably. Uh, yeah, but the road's fairly clear. I would yeah, just stop in enough. at, uh... At your house, house right here. Yeah. Sure enough. As we had jumped by a mid-boss. Inexplicably. Open the door. Oh no, Rhinoceros Cider! <laughs> <laughs> it's by the fact that we're still in the prologue. Rhinoceros Cider's mother, a literary reference! Ah! <laughs> Oh, no, Jen, it's not Twitch losing its mind. It's just, this this was made before people invented quality PC ports. So it does occasionally crash. Uh, hence why we kind of put an emphasis on saving a lot. Yes. In Valkyria also... Chronicles, we save because we're frustrated. Here, we're frustrated because we have to save. <laughs> Also, before autosaves were much of a thing, so it's that much more frustrating. Um, because PS2 game. Okay, I did save after I bought all of the mountains of ingredients. Yes, you did that before going out to fight the uh... Rhino Cider. Yeah. Exactly. Behold, these conversations we've already seen. Ramble, 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 oh, mountain sorry. pervert. Ramble, 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 ramble,
<laughs> so if a loaf of bread is 300 and it only costs 2,000 for a broken clock and camera repair hey, where are we getting loaf of bread from well, wasn't the bread like 300 I assume it's a full loaf at least for that much okay well first off right, we've gotten through those long diatribes Yes. Okay, so we can do a similar kind of thing with uh, fresh milk. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm guessing it's a uh, carton of milk, like a quart of milk. Yeah, that's a fair assessment, at least. So it's fifty gold for a single thing of fresh milk. Which, in the world of air, in, yeah, which would set you back about, like, what, two bucks currently? I want to say something like that. Maybe if you got the real premium stuff, it's like 250. Right, so 2,000 time, so 2,000 is 40 times that, so 40 times two bucks. So it's like 80 bucks. It's probably about on scale, actually. Assuming the scale is not using some insane currency. Alright. Into the woods again. Same enemy again. Huh. The bonuses for the turns are not random. Huh. That's exploitable. They're not random? Uh, the same bonuses happened on the same turns that they did before the game crashed. Huh. The so turn order was different, but the actual bonuses weren't. It might be a coincidence, but if not, it would be save scalable, which is interesting. Yeah. Like, for the moment, we'll file that away under interesting news. Yeah. I mean, it'd be more something you would need as an advantage for, like, extreme bullshit. Oh no, they're hitting for zero damage. Yeah. The cats are not a threat. literally hit the fast forward button, keep attacking, build up uh, CP for when we need to actually use dual strike against things. Actually, Jin, that would make a lot of sense. Where everyone else in the town can actually haggle, haggle the price of uh, milk down to like, maybe like five. I forget what the currency is in this u universe, but the, the heroes are too lazy. And just throw money at the clerk. Literally. She's an narcoleptic.
this fucking game. Yeah, yeah, with all the selling off of monster parts in order to gain money, that, that, that it would just lead more to a barter system in general. Even if there is a currency in the world, you're going to get a lot more exchanging of uh, commodities rather than actually uh, using uh, money as an in-between. It could be that the Bracer Guild itself forces them to use a form of currency. Just because the Bracer Guild is international and needs to work off an international form of currency. Whereas this local village doesn't give a shit, and... There's a little bit of that, or more specifically, the Bracer Guild just backs its own currency because, uh, I assume its members travel a good amount. And they want to be able to actually carry wealth with them rather than having to carry tons of monster parts. It does actually make a good, a good amount of sense, as a matter of fact, now I think about for a type of, like, adventuring guild to issue its own currency. Especially since they actually have the locations to act as a kind of de facto bank. Yeah, probably something like that, Jin. Like... Especially if they're in a place that can't immediately sell something like a wolf belt or whatever, and they don't really want to cart it around for its full price, they could, they could like, pawn it off as part of a botter. So, yeah, yeah. first chest you encountered? I've probably missed one because I've just been kind of racing through the whole tower. Yeah. I'm also not terribly concerned about getting every chest. No, I'm just looking for ones that actually have equipment. Yeah. Uh, the third floor actually had some knitted shoes. Some what shoes? Knitted shoes. Oh. From the looks of it. No, it's on the fourth floor, never mind, so that should be that chest. Third floor had a couple tier or had a tier bomb, so who cares? Do not blind the whatever the hell we're fighting. That's tier ball. That's a potion. Uh... Up. So from the
And they're fast. They're fast, and they heal on hit. Yeah, which is annoying. Yeah. So, okay, if that's the way you... Uh... Ah, oh, we're being attacked by balls. I do not feel like fighting for you. Okay, so go back to the... I think that's Found it. Found Yeah. Okay. What are they? Better shoes, got it. Defense 7 and move plus 1. He definitely needs more movement. So, probably save as well. Uh, actually, actually, I'm not. Hmm. Oh, I forgot to buy the better boots. That's what I was remembering. Ah. We bought better boots last time. Yeah, he's already got move five. She's hmm. only got move four. So now they both ah. have move five. Which gives her a better range, so... We're gonna heal up real quick. Okay. We are now properly uh, saved up. There are two split paths once again. East and go south. Two paths both lead to the fifth floor. One leads to the treasure chest that you already got. Um. Oh, that's a terrible encounter. Oh, yeah. You want to just run. Yup. Okay, there's a okay, so, chest over there. Uh, yes. Uh, I'm not sure which path you took, but one of them basically leads... Uh, they both lead forward from the previous floor. Uh, the... Yeah, so I think you get it by going back to the previous floor and taking the other path. That is a lot of monsters. It doesn't know we're a party of two and have no UE attacks, right? I mean... Potluck in a shell. Yeah. What's that to? I'd assume heal. Oh, cures KO. We have a way of oh. making Phoenix Downs. I'll yep. save that for when someone's KO'd. Yep. Okay. So you're saying there's so a second way from, up? Yeah, uh, go south, I believe is what the instruction said. Uh, from the center platform, the two split past, one lean east, the other goes south. There's a. Is there a door on that other. Yeah, there's a stairway right there. Yeah, they don't have much hit points, but the fact that they uh, heal every time they attack is really annoying. Yeah, so up that way. Okay. Yeah, I see the path now. Yeah. Oh, but a monster appeared! Yes. Uh, they self-destruct. So, like, focus fire or something. It would help if he could actually hit. It would indeed help if you could actually hit. So yeah, try to finish him off at range with magic. Preparing to do what? Use Preparing hearts. to use hearts. 
Kill him with his own hammer. Uh, might. Yeah. Nope, she's down. I was wondering why you didn't just use an item. Uh, right. Feed her some food. Or something. And we've learned the recipe for potluck in a shell now. Yay. And that moves him away from the thing that's going to self-destruct when we blow it up. Oh, I could. Oh, no. <laughs> Attaboy, sponge. See that everyone is doing their job and playing their role. Yep. Like, literally any attack spell. There we go. That was a lot of XP. Uh, yes, they were not at a low level. Estelle has learned Hurricane. Hooray! And a Tin Staff. numbers. Okay. Behold my superior numbers. Ah, oh, she learned a hurricane. Uh, uh, craft, I mean. Oh, she has an attack craft now. Maybe? Who knows? Attack... I, 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 <laughs> it's called hurricane. I... Oh, it's an area attack. Okay. Oh, it's even better. It took her a while to get an attack, but at least we have an area attack, finally. Yeah. So what's been making these fights really bad is because they throw us against, like, five enemies. And we've just got to wear we're... them down one at a time. Yeah. Okay, so now we need to use the other entrance. In order to actually go up, yeah. Uh, that should be all the items other than a tear bomb that we... That's on the third floor that we did. It's not worth the effort. Absolutely not worth the effort, especially with the cooking system. Yeah. Uh, yep, top floor cutscene. Probably should have mentioned in advance there's no boss, but... I'm fine with that. Yeah. It's more if just in case you're saving resources for a boss that isn't there. Yeah. Your sources are dumb. That's a device. No shit, Sherlock. <laughs> Hope you didn't pay for that information. It's a device and it's ancient. Thanks, guys. That's a very little help. Imagine the thing you found in this old derelict tower is old. And it does something. We 
We are not robbers currently. No one's hired us to be robbers. We'll totally be robbers if we're paid for it. We're just here aiding the liberal news. Ah, uh, aiding and abetting the liberal media. Ah, uh, Professor Alba Dumbledore. Septarians, because we didn't want to say Seven Treasures. Septarians is a banned Yu-Gi-Oh deck. <laughs> I've got all seven Septarians out! The game is mine! You guys built a religion around Seven Treasure. You guys are idiots. Slumber's somewhere within Liberal. No, that sounds like fake news. Ah, the Oriole! Which sounds like a dirty word, but isn't. Please not talk about passion. Not with Nial in the party. Nial and someone with a um, real, really strong case of protagonism. You talk about passion too much, you'll turn super hot blooded. And no one wants to see that. It's the policy of the liberal news to verify our information, no matter what some people might say. And then lie about it anyways. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> well, she's dead, but she did get some great pictures on the way down. <laughs> I mean, you look at them all together, they're kind of tragic, because it's just closer and closer pictures of the landscape. On the other hand, if you look at them backwards, they're kind of heroic, because she's just leaping straight up <laughs> to the top of the building. If you look at them backwards, <laughs> she's returning to her home planet. Goddamn off-camera NPC townsfolk playing instruments. It's just changing the atmosphere too much. That view is awful. That view is super awful. I... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's just that just does not look good. <laughs> like, if you're going to have her comment on how good a view looks, could you please render it a bit better than that? <laughs> I know you guys can do better on graphics than that. Especially for our floating pillar tower thing. Um, but that's our matter entirely. It's like you put a green filter on a desert. And then drew a couple of no, rivers. I'm gonna be honest, before I saw the little support that were holding the pillar on there. I thought this was just a case of my monitor has a better resolution than the PSP, so we're seeing things we really weren't supposed to. Like, we were supposed to see the pillar like this, but we were seeing the cut-off bottom of it where they just stopped caring. 
<laughs> no, no, it's supposed to be like that. Photo quartz. Yes, because we have to magically duplicate real-world technology that we need at this particular moment. You know, that looks a lot better. Just adding the mountains. Yeah. If they actually said it, like, while they were I, looking off to the north and not, you know, straight well, down... Well, the, the other problem is that the isometric <laughs> viewpoint makes it look like the tower is dangerously tilting and we should all be sliding off to our deaths. That, too. <laughs> but it's like... Say, this is a great view from the most objectively awful-looking viewpoint on this uh, section. <laughs> Yeah, because as you get more towards the top of this tower, this actually seems to be looking a lot better. <laughs> yeah, I kind of agree, Jin. There's no need to make up a fantasy um, camera when normal cameras really aren't that complex. <laughs> Look, Jin, I'm going to be honest. Every writing room needs the rolled-up newspaper in it. Yes. This one needed several. <laughs> Remember, a writing room can be undone when a table is too long for one member of the writing team to not be slappable by every other member. <laughs> Geopolitical intrigue! From the skeezy guy! The god-awful suspenders. Hey, light blue is a perfectly fine color for suspenders. Not against royal purple. <laughs> uh, have you talked to everyone? Oh, right, I have to talk to, uh, Professor Dumbledore. Yeah. Yeah, let's talk to everyone, then talk to Joshua again. Yeah, see, here, here it is. She's 16. Hey, she's actually doing better than most JRPG protagonists. She only lost one parent. Yeah, it's like a 50% improvement. Yeah. And her dad's a famous adventurer and hasn't died on a mysterious quest with world-shaking implications. Okay, so I'm guessing space urine. Take bets on what no. this is, but Space Urinal seems like it's good guesses in. Uh, I'm going with Transport to the Real World. We're all actually just in a video game. This isn't Star Ocean.
gen, the world would be much better off if there was, was way more round robin slap fights than we actually have. Round robin, nah, battle royale slap fight. Last rider standing. Let the conviction in your story carry you forward like deathbed. Indeed. We get them all onto a plane, drop them onto an island at random points. All right, you all have ideas for the next Spider-Man movie. We're going to drop you onto an island owned by Sony Pictures, and you're all going to fight for the chance to make your script the one we use. I mean, technically, Jen, there's a decent amount of protagonists with parents. It's just their parent is usually and inevitably uh, somewhere between inept, neglectful, or an outright piece of shit. It's the Gendo Akari School of Parenting. It doesn't have to be the Gendo Akari School of Parenting. It could also be the, um... The Elric School of Parenting. They're yes. As a matter of fact, uh, let me pull up, um... Crunchyroll and read practically half the animes in the... <laughs> it could be... <laughs> it could be from a lot of anime. <laughs> the better parents are usually the dead ones, as a matter of fact. Look, Joshua, don't get romantic about the bracer job. We are collecting yak asses for anyone in town who asks for a set number of yak asses. Proceed to the Eagle Eye Quartz! Yay. I'm going to assume that's actually decent in some way, shape, or form. Yeah. Alright, problem drinking! Go Sherazad! <laughs> What's your usual MO? Drink, tell stories that last the entire night? Apparently try to strip in public. <laughs> in front of no! 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 <laughs> Speaking of that rolled up newspaper, Greg... <laughs> <laughs> Damn it, people! <laughs> Did we miss something in the age of consent here? Just a lot lower? Oh, God! Uh, considering the setting, the age of consent is probably a lot lower. Actually, considering Japan, the age of consent is lower. We do have a major problem. Mayor Klaus arrests this woman. <laughs> Put the handcuffs on her. Home has been robbed. All right, small town crime. Yeah, that is true, Jen. It's one of those stereotypes that never breaks, really, for some reason. Mainly because they want to have young characters and not have them have 
incompetent or not have or not try to justify where why uh, their parents are letting them go out on dangerous whatevers. Well, this explains why the safe was animated to open. I see. So after this incident, it is apparently our job as bracers to put on maid outfits and clean the place. They also do want short adults, but that's more uh, when you turn everyone into sprites, everyone just kind of ends up either the same size or looking ridiculously short and small. Now, as for modern RPGs, yeah, I got no idea. I mean, this whole thing would be fixed by um, stop using uh, children as your main characters in plots and actually use adults. Yeah! Joshua's got a theory, and I'm liking his gumption, but... <sighs> well, he's... He is one of the main characters, so therefore, whatever he comes up with off the top of his head is obviously what reality will bend itself around in order to make sure that's exactly what happened. I also like this very militaristic investigation music. So the off-screen townsfolk who are in charge of the music only know so many different types of songs, so they don't really have anything for investigation straightforward. So they're doing their best to improvise, damn it. There was a long rant when you went to the bathroom. Ah. Just me talking about how all the townsfolk you don't uh, don't see in the implied larger town are actually just standing around off screen playing the music, twenty four hours a day. I can see it. Yeah, yeah, Jen, that's also an issue. Japan loves its schoolyard romances way too goddamn much. I would actually prefer if they did a lot more adult ones. And to be fair, in Mongo, which generally tends to be the source material for a third to a half of uh, all anime in a season, uh, there's a lot more variety, and you will actually find more stuff like adult romances and such, as a lot of which is done well. I mean, they, they don't actually pick good stuff. They usually favor mediocre stuff for whatever reason, but that's an error entirely. Mainly because uh, favoring good stuff would involve taking risks. Something studios tend to be a bit averse to, or insanely so. Which is, granted, no different than um, any media company in the United States, for that matter.
I mean, true, Jen, but JRPG, anime and JRPGs are generally drawing from the same well of writers, as far as I can see. And the same basic, like, bubbles of ideas. Almost to the point where game elements do actually bleed into anime and manga entirely too much when it comes to fantasy. I tend to lump all of those mediums basically in the same uh, grouping for that reason. Sort of a super group of Japanese entertainment. Ah, we have party member. an actual party member? Yep. Huh. Actual party member. And we finally learned her last name. Sherazad Harvey. I think there's... I, I think it, there's trying to go for Sherazad Harvey, but the spelling just got weird. Almost certainly. But God, is that a mashup of two completely different things. <laughs> <laughs> She's got some stories to tell. <laughs> uh, the shitty puns, they never stop. Okay. I'm actually more surprised it took you that long to get to it. <laughs> there was never a good time for it. Yeah, true. Also, we're gonna go boot shopping. I want them boots! <laughs> <laughs> ah, spikes. They're not actually spiked boots, they're literally just, like, giant spikes that they're stilting around on ninja-style. Uh... Actually. Oh, buy two. One for each of us. Since I'm almost certain that our mentor here is gonna die. I don't know what you're talking about. She's only way over sad in comparison to us. Probably actually equip them. Yep. Uh, it still gets the knitted shoes because they're better. And silver earring and white bracelets. And silver earring and a spare white bracelet for someone else. Uh, Aid from the front, teach. Sadist whip, huh? Classy. <laughs> ah. Ah, you can actually unlock things. Yep. Can I open another uh, slot. On Estelle. Now I'm gonna see if I can pull an FF6. Oh, take her orbits out. Yep. I mean, they're probably just going to hand us them anyways. Um, I think we just make all of these, can't we? Uh, no, because I spent most of the the. Uh, quartz on actually ah. uh, opening the grid. Oh, also, Eagle Eye. Can see enemies for the... That's incredibly valuable! Yes. The Eagle Eye that we got. Because that will finally stop us from getting sneak Randomly attacked jumped. all the time. Yeah. Uh, so we're going to take her... Art defense. Good. So now we have art defense. Yep. And we have a uh, new spell. 
Yes, we have Ariel. Which is something. It's something. An area attack for wind. Ooh. Well, All there we sorts go. sorts of area attacks. Hooray, area attacks. Uh, also, because she's turning into an arts character, I think we're going to drop her attack and give her EP cut. He's got Eagle Eye. Okay. Oh, she is a permanent character. Oh, she is? Yeah. Well. Oh. Uh, that is Wing Quartz only. Uh. Well, you better earn her keep and get more Wind Quartz for us, too. Or Wind Scepter actually, for us. Actually, uh. She has a Wind Quartz in the first slot. Yes. She, uh, the first slot is Wind Quartz only as well. Yes. Yes. yes okay, is. yeah. So you need another Wind Quartz in order to equip her. Yep. All right, then. I'm not giving it back. I mean, she probably is a better physical attacker than us as well. Or than Estelle. Yes. Yes. So, yes, yeah. Is. As the craft siphon whip, I think. Or sylphon whip? Sylphon. So, wind whip. Yeah. Got it. Uh, you could put the um, accessory on her, however. Yes. Menus! She's gone. Uh, let's see. We already investigated the mayor's house, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we did the investigation there. We did the whole uh, deduction thing. Okay. As far as I can tell, we got the good result. Uh, Shah Shaharzard, uh, let's see. Question Dust, yeah. Uh, joining groups, da da da. We already went to the inn. Uh, talk to the receptionist in the landing port. Ah, okay, talk to the receptionist in the landing port. Yeah, so that dude. Yep. God damn it! Everyone in this town a filthy pervert. <laughs> so, quoth the guide, once you hear what the perverted receptionist has to say... <laughs> Good night, everybody. Highway. Yep. 
So next town, Mistwall. Which I think we were, or we went to before to buy, like, a sandwich or something. Yeah, we already went there once to buy a sandwich. Foreshadowing. It's a slightly cheaper version of five shadowing. Whew. On the road again. trying to molest my best friend. <laughs> <laughs> I will say at least it's equal opportunity. There's as many people trying to uh, molest Joshua as a stealth. Well, people have only made skeevy comments about uh, about uh, Estelle like once or twice. There's been at least like three people who have come on to Jonathan. Joshua, but yeah. Drangnangula. His name is Cougar Bait. <laughs> we'll call you John Cougarman. Sadist uses a whip. Uh, no tension combat. See, that's nothing to damage you. We hope you've enjoyed no moral theater. <laughs> Walls to the east, and compass directions are for losers. Sign is really passive aggressive. This whole town's got issues. My god, actual damage. Oh, the birds were a big problem back the last time we were here. That's true. Yeah, according to the guide, she's actually really good early game, but late game is, uh, drops off as a character. I can see it. Just you have better options when it comes to other party members. Yeah. Let's move out.
seems you came up short. I think we made a wrong turn. Nope, missed wall. We're here. Ah, ah never mind then. Wall, there's no map for you to use. Facing north, go straight forward. That's not a direction, but yeah, I, I think you get the point. Just keep going north, basically. Yep. Ah, oh, it's the Death Bees. Uh, second area, there's three log bridges. Read more after they get there. Yeah, these are no these are no longer death bees at least. Amazing what like what two levels do it does in this game? Yeah. I kind of appreciate it not having level inflation in a way. Our heroes still can't hit the mildly annoying bees, but let's move out. Well they're better than last time at least. A gravelly goober. Oh. And bosses that are now regular things. Okay, so there's three log bridges. That's what it was talking about. Yep. On the leftmost side, it leads to a bear claw. Center and rightmost bridges lead to an intersection. At the intersection, there's two paths. I think we already got the bear claw. Although not... No, we didn't get this bear claw. We got a different bear claw. Yeah, that is a rhino cider. That's a dead rhino cider. Yep. And pinecone of doom. Also explodes. As a matter of fact, that was a boss too, from what I remember. Yep, I specifically remember the exploding part because that's why uh, Estelle doesn't have a lot of uh, experience right now. Yeah. Well, she's not that far behind, but it's no, she's only like, like two boss fights, but yeah. So yeah, there's an item on the left path, then take either one. It doesn't matter past that. There we go. No, we're out of bear claws! Only a single one? Oh, you poor beast. characterization of uh, our mentor has just completely turned around. <laughs> well, starts, you know. Starts off the game as the wise mentor who's guiding these people into becoming proper bracers, and Okay, now... so... Uh, uh, let's see. North one leads to a dead end. The path you want is the east one. Path you want is the east one? Got it. Yeah. Sailor Mercury's evil! <laughs> that could be a dude. Sailor Mercury could be a dude. 
That's obviously pronounced Jose it. Josette and the Pussycats. That one, yeah. Now we will fight! <laughs> <laughs> Aha, uh -huh, I've transformed into a parka. A gun. All right. Uh, murder the, the add-ons, murder the boss. Yeah. Uh, the add-ons cause poison. She has several moves, including shooting you with a gun. Oh, well, it's a good thing two of our three members are immune to poison. Yep. is kind of important. Yep. Do not forget the fact that you can take extra turns. Yep. <sighs> you people. It does like 200 and something, so probably just kill the guy on the left. Yep. on the sprite tits. Game! Game! I've been giving you a lot of credit. Come on. I know we're playing... Like, well, this is not the Tuesday game. If this was Life in Hometown, I would not be complaining in the slightest. <laughs> this was Life in Hometown. Everyone knew exactly what they were getting into, and nobody could complain. This Japanese media... Children's shows will will uh, get that racy. Uh, probably should do next one. No, she gets an additional turn after this, so we're gonna heal. Uh... Oh, Estelle. Heal Estelle. I'm going to be back in a bit. Yep, that's fine. Yeah! Alright, we're gonna do this Overlord style. We're gonna stand in front of each other, scream out buff names, and then a minute later, we're gonna go at each other.
Oh, that's not great. What the hell just happened there? Well, that's not pleasant. Okay. only battle. <laughs> oh no, a gun. I knew it was causing that. I'm also hoping she's got an EP uh, limit, because if she doesn't have an EP limit, she's going to win this fight solely by attrition. We have no way of restoring our EP. Oh no, consequences for my actions, my only weakness. Also, wow, that got into weirder territory than I thought it was going to go into. I'm just going to casually mention we're going to molest our prisoners. I mean, I've seen games like this before, but I didn't think we we're going to be playing them on Twitch. That is a masterful parking job.
I think that's fairly obvious, Joshua. Seventh class! And thus ends the prologue. We are, of course, going to save the game. I don't want to have to go through that boss fight again. Thank you. 
And I'm back. Welcome back. So what I miss? Um, so the only real big thing of importance is there is currently a missing airliner from Bose to Liberal. Uh huh. And that's the airship that our dad left on. Mm. It is currently missing. No one knows where it is. And so Estelle has made up her mind that in the morning she's going to travel to Bose to try and find what happened to the airliner. Hmm. Also, we're having Sprite Chicken and Sprite Soup. Ah, Sprite Chicken and Sprite Soup. Not to be confused with Sprite Chicken Soup. Oh, that sounds disgusting. Just, like, Sprite poured into some chicken soup. Actually, I imagine... Just from the way I said that, the fairy equivalent of a chicken. So saying that would be a chicken to, to a pixie. Ah, oh, tiny chicken. Made it. Yes. So a bunch of those thrown into a soup. Behold, a clock. We've raised this clock tower to commemorate the day that Jim Dunn got sat on by a hog and died. <laughs> then they done bombed it. Then we done built it again. We are simple rural country folk. Good, our plan to murder Joshua is coming along swimmingly. He'll never suspect getting pushed off the clock tower. <laughs> oh, you also missed uh, Scheherazade threatening to molest our prisoners. Ah. Before they got away on an airship. So, standard methods of interrogation, you could say. Yep. Unfortunately, our plan to murder Joshua uh, hinges on Estelle from being able to remember something for more than five minutes. Ah, if only my mother wasn't part goldfish. You know, hopefully when you come to your dad's rescue, you won't die like your mom did. <laughs> eh, considering her level of protagonism, probably not. Everyone knows that your plot armor is proportional to the amount of protagonism you have. I 
Unless the author is trying to be subversive. Which, oddly enough, I think these writers could actually pull off in this game, except uh, it's just not that type of game. As opposed to Valkyria Cro Profile, or, or yeah, Valkyria Chronicles uh, writers who could totally pull off subversive, just completely on accident and of their own theme. Yes. <laughs> Remember, the goddess's protection? Total bullshit. Your dead ghost mom, on the other hand. That shit's worth at least five defense. Ah, Scheherazade's a carny. That actually explains why her parents named her Scheherazade. Yep. It wasn't just a cruel joke. 60%. Maybe more. Okay. Uh, we needed a green one for uh, Shahrazad, didn't we? Yep, that's why we're making this yeah. impede. Yep. Now she has airstrike. Yep. Yep. And siphon guard. And, yeah. Siphon guard. Yeah. Yeah. Joshua. I assume we can't unlock anything anymore. Right at the moment. takes, at the bare minimum, 30 of the top four types. Nah, yeah, so we don't have, uh... Yeah. And the farther you get from the center, the more quartz it takes to do. Yeah. So we'd have to go out and farm the elements. <sighs> There will be farming done off camera, just not here. Yeah. Yeah. Understandable. Oh. We could deliver a letter while we're here. Yes, letter carrier. Bolton board and Roland before you cross the border. Uh, after looking at the board, head to the Roland Capital, talk to Father Divine. We give you Father Divine's letter, deliver to the pastor, but then the Bose Chapel. Basically, yep. do everything you're doing. Fairly self explanatory. We apparently also deliver the mail. Well, I mean, with the airships down, the usual routes are not there. That's why we're having to do this whole True enough. run down in the first place. Yeah. Instead of uh, sneaking onto the airship and waiting in the hall for 30 minutes real time for it to get there. Oh, World of Warcraft. You so I, suppose, 
Actually, I was making a King's Quest 3, uh, 3 reference. Ah. Oh. Technically, we were kidnapped by pirates, then broke free, then waited in the hole for 30 mi minutes. Real time. Oh, this is the wrong way. Mm -hmm. That's the Grand Cell. Grand Cell. That's a fun word to say. Say it with me. Grandson. Uh. Yeah. Uh, note. What, we're going through Mistwald? I don't think so. Uh. I have no idea why this guy does not have directions for where to go. Should be noted that we're not going to be able to make our way back to where we were after we do this, so make oh, sure everything is done. Yeah, we've done all the other quests. The only one yeah. we have is to go to Bows. Yeah. Oh, right. Never mind. Out this way. Yeah, it's... Out that other exit from the city. Mm-hmm. Hi, everyone, we're back. My dad's still missing. Bye. Somebody please fire that lady who was around the inn. Bye. There we go. Milkman bread. Also, we're going to stop now that we have three people, and we're going to open this fucking uh Ah, oh, yes, chest that chest. Here. And AoE attacks. The AoE attacks are actually more important. Yep. Very wide area. Yep. Cats are learning how to kill. Very nice. Yep. Focus the tornado somewhere safe, right? Yeah, sure. Sure. Meanwhile, in town... Oh, rain of dead cats! <laughs> <laughs> that is a lot of crystals. Hell yeah. And beast flesh. And a topaz talisman. What's the topaz talisman? Attack and defense become earth-based. Got it. Elemental weaknesses. Got it. Yeah, Jen, I wish Metal Gear Solid was the worst defender when it came to just waiting around, as previously mentioned with uh, King's Quest 3. I mean, literally, we have a recording of it. It's up on the actual Sound Goblin YouTube channel. Yep. I mean... That portion is, uh, I think, played at least double times speed. Because, I think you played uh, it at, like, four times speed, I thought you said. Yeah, I think that was four times, actually. 
because I don't actually hate our army. Let's prepare to I did the ludicrous speed. Yeah. Yes. I did the editing. The other three were basically uh, sitting around going insane for a half hour. Talking about various nonsense. Including words that I have to censor. Now, to be fair, part of the problem that we had... Like, we never talked about this in the actual thing, but one of the problems that we had was we couldn't use the fast versions of the game. Like, faster and fastest, because they were tied to clock speed, whereas the normal version was not. Yes. Um, so, so it didn't actually change how long you had to wait. Stupidly. No, the... We could have changed how long we were going to wait with the, the speed thing. But no. by the time we would have typed in the code or the magic word that we needed to actually cause the thing that we were trying to do, it would have been too late. No, I think it would... No, because you guys actually played a round of speed during that time just to screw around. Uh, if I remember, it didn't actually affect the in-game clock and how fast time progressed in the game, just how fast you moved. This is a bad gate. <laughs> <laughs> There's totally a chain there to prevent you from walking around. business. Yes. Because you won't be allowed to return to Roland ever again. This gate is also bad. Uh, yes. Alright, what kind of new enemies are waiting for us on the Eastern Bows Highway? <gasps> oh no, these fucked up Death Skulls. Why did we want to come to this place again? This is a terrible thing. A mad roper? Oh, I've seen this game before. Uh. Why do so many things in this game have tentacles? Uh, because tentacles are easy to animate and makes it look like a monster. Also Japan. Ah, death mole. A, a halo mole. Obviously, he's a member of the Covenant. We're good to go. Nebel Valley. Right. Are we supposed to be going to Nebel Valley or are we supposed to go into another place? Uh, let's see. Keep going. Keep going straight at East Bose Highway until you reach the, uh, hit the city of Bose. Ah, oh, okay. The answer is no, then. Yes, the answer is no. Out of the mountains. <laughs> I like Jen's answer. It's because the artists are hungry. I want to draw noodles. <laughs> Takeshi, I'm thinking noodles. I think you're right. I gotta draw these weird monsters for this video game. But I also want noodles. 
Only there was a way to combine my two loves of noodles and things menacing Japanese children. Well, that's just a snake. That called for backup. You know what that means. It's a snake police. Oh, teacher got poisoned. heal her between combat or are we just good? Toot toot! Everyone's allergic to just giving exposition. Talking is not a free action. I mean, it is, but it isn't. Talking, unlike rocks, are free. No, too many noodles. Yeah, enemy is being able to summon help is kind of bullshit. Regardless of which game you're playing. Also, her AoE is just kind of garbage. It's a little bit too small, yeah. It's better if stuff happens to group up, but... Yeah, that... I mean, you gotta grind for monster parts, but considering but that's your phoenix down... Alright, oh, that's, that's pretty nice. Yeah. I'm just gonna make eight of those. I'd love it if in the background of one of these it just had hammering effects. So. <laughs> yeah, like the sound of a saw, like somebody's activating a uh, jackhammer. This is the city of Bose, which is in the Bose region. The Bose region. Known for its excellent speakers that don't work for anything outside the Bose region.
Uh, okay, so we're actually here. Uh, finish that letter carrier quest, so go to the chapel. Yep, I was looking for where that it. was. It's down here. Uh, okay. I know this is pretty standard for JRPGs in general, for, like, the priest to be behind a podium while preaching to... or... or that's kind of where you speak to him, but we are literally interrupting him in the middle of mass, it looks like. In this particular case, in order to deliver a letter. Just stops in the middle of whatever he's doing. <laughs> Adventures are apparently more important. Well, look at his congregation. His congregation is woman and tiny child who were on the pilgrimage from uh, Roland, and no one else. It's an early mass. You have to get some practice in. Well, Jin, considering the giant building in the middle of town, that makes sense. <laughs> uh, let's see. Right, we're in the middle of actual plot. Minuet's magazine stand um, sells the Carnelia chapters, apparently. Nice. Yeah. Right, jurisdictional disputes. Paperwork. Exciting paperwork. This certainly won't mean anything later. Okay, so... Yep. Reported the letter carrier. Yep. Alright. So, side quests. Yeah, the Ravenue monster, Ingredient Seeker, and the East Bose monster. Okay. Uh, it should be noted, while we don't have any yet, some side quests won't actually come, uh, at its, uh, won't come from, uh, the boards inside the guild. At a... Ah! From this point onward. Okay. Right. Ugh. So now that we have side quests, 
Let's completely ignore them. Explore the Wait. rest of the town. What? Ah, uh, game crashed. <laughs> so the thing, the thing I was waiting on was occasionally I've caught the game not updating our position. So when we open a menu or when we talk to somebody for a brief period of time, we'll appear like wherever we were like 15 seconds ago on another screen. Hmm. Uh, that's fantastic. I'm going to go make myself a cup of coffee, so I might be out of broadcast range for a little bit. I'm not that's, positive. That's fine. I'm resetting up the stream and everything. Yeah. <laughs> All right. In case you missed it last time. Here's where we did a bunch of running. Commence the rabble rabbles. Commence talking to a priest. This is less rabble rabbles and more banjo kazooie things. Very weird sounds to have Kane in and out when I'm trying to make a cup of coffee. I'm just doing the speed up review. I figured. Yep, you ain't missing much, Jinrin. Okay. All right, we're now caught up. Hooray! I'm now watching the stream again. Ooh, there's a piano. Can we play it? Aw. Shack. Fanny.
So I want every character in this game to only go by their for or to only go by their first names and all of them to have different first names. Okay. We are going to start mining the bottom of the barrel very, very quick. <laughs> Ah, it's an indoor market. Yeah, they were mentioning, like, you can pretty much find anything here except for weapons and ornaments. Which I assume are in different parts of the city? Yes. Yeah, I think it specifically mentioned, uh... Minuet's magazine stand. So yeah, it's probably in here, actually. Yep. I assume we cannot just buy Monster Carapace. Nope, we gotta go kill for that. Yes, we need to go outside the city and kill the diverse ind indigenous uh, life, life forms, uh, all for the sake of the uh, singular race inside these wall cities. Or to make revival potions, whatever works. Right, so we buy one of each so we can steal the recipe. Yep. Corporate espionage. And there's Cornelia Chapter 2. Yep. We can also buy the Liberal News. Ah, uh, obsolete equipment. Yep. Wow! Huh? Wow, the description on that weapon. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. I know, that's so off. You do not use parry knives in domestic disputes. You want to go for something much broader. Use the nerf knives. <laughs> Also, butcher cleaver, but it's also yeah, it's not that it's not because of effectiveness so much as just intimidation factor. I mean, a parry knife is clearly for street fighting.
Jin, did you miss the description of the uh, pairing knife? I will go back and show that, because I still can't believe that's an actual thing. <laughs> the description of the pairing knife is used by pro chefs and sometimes in domestic disputes. This has been your lesson on domestic disputes for the day. It's also a very a bad lesson. Obviously, you don't use paring knives. You're usually looking for something more like a carving knife or a uh, butcher's cleaver if you want the intimidation factor. A paring knife is much more for like fighting on the street, or probably more like a street fight where you need like something more subtle to stab someone with. So they don't know you actually have a knife. Good, we can make more, uh... More types of them in general. Yeah. Yeah. I will take this, and we'll put that on Estelle. You're actually making P2. It has, like, three element on it. Yep. I mean, that takes 300, uh... Septith to make. Yeah, that is not cheap. check something. Uh, huh. uh, status. Her arts are 32. Her arts are 44. Granted, she's level 12, so... Yeah. And Joshua's arts? Joshua's arts are not worth mentioning. God damn it! <laughs> Doesn't matter. She's the only one who's got free uh, or slot types. Yeah. Oh, Joshua has very specific warp types. Yeah. Uh, all of Estelle's seem to be free. Yeah. Whereas Joshua's first one is time element. Ah. Uh, so it has that's... to be a time element there. Hmm. And the other two are something and something. He has two other ones that are free. Okay, so it's only his first one that's uh, locked to time element. Uh, I don't think you get anything at four wins, so you could probably take the shield off. No, it takes four wind to, for us to have aerial. Ah, okay. So EP cut would be the only... I mean, the other thing we could do is we could... Because two water element isn't going to get us much. Mm -hmm. Technically, we have one from HP, so it would technically be three? Or is... No, it would be two no. total. Never mind. Two total. One yes, from I HP, one from so I wasn't really going to get us anything, yeah. Uh, I think actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to swap her over to... Yeah, there we go, because that gets us lots here. Which is, uh, I believe, an area cure? Yeah, area cure. Hmm. So we're going to do that for her. And then we're going to go back and we're going to give Scheherazade back the thing that we took from her. Uh, the MP, I believe. Yep. 
Might as well do the attack, yeah. Yep. There we go. And now... Well, she's trying. That's the important thing. Trying, you, you say. Are you being mean to Shaharazad? Huh? Are you no. mean to Shaharazad? No, we're saying Estelle is trying. Oh, well, mm. yeah. We're turning her into a magic user, but she's got the lowest ATS of the entire party. In fairness, Shaharazad is... Um... Also level 12, yes. But she has lower than Joshua as well, so... I mean, she is a moron, so this doesn't make sense that she's not great at magic. <laughs> Yes, welcome, Shiv. Clearly just need yes. some uh, force that increases your magic. Uh, she has one equipped. She's doing the best she can. <laughs> she is doing the best she can. <laughs> Here's a weapon well, store. Yeah, yeah, it goes alright. Uh, yeah. We solved a mystery and uh, learned about domestic disputes. <laughs> uh, found a creepy old pervert man. These are all very expensive, and we're not going to buy them. Uh, permanently moved to the town of Bose. Ah, oh, let's grab Bose now. Yes. yes. Buy some speakers. I already made those jokes. I wasn't here for them, so I get to make them again. <laughs> <laughs> Had our fair share of crashes. Discuss the off-screen, or discuss the uh, probability of off-screen NPCs being the uh, being the source of all the music in the town. Constant. And an economy based around the eating of monster droppings. I mean, you don't need livestock. You can just kill a monster and eat uh, and eat whatever the hell drops. Well, I mean, it's a random. Whether or not you get a monster drop? Uh, yes, but in this particular game, you get um whatever the hell the uh, resource is called that you show uh, that you shove into orbit. The, the the stuff that you shove into orbit no orbits when you yeah you get you get the, the elemental quartz or the hell it's called yeah septus septus there you go. Yeah, so obviously... but I don't think most people use septus. That's not really a big boon for most. Yeah, people. you have to have orbment to use septus. Yeah. To you, Septif, yes. And but you to have to be good enough to kill monsters if you want to go, you know, harvest monsters for all your food. It's not enough to feed a town. Well, that's why they need the bracers. Yeah, the bracers do random odd jobs, like fixing lights, collecting radioactive mushrooms. Now, we don't know that the townsfolk don't randomly go out and murder monsters for, for their own profits. It also helps explain the over uh, uh, overpriced bread. Overpriced in what way? Uh, if I remember, it was like three hundred for like a loaf, and could be a very big loaf. I mean, really, three hundred like whatever money you use could be equivalent to like three dollars uh no we, no we very roughly calculated that actually uh since the milk is like 50 and you could equate milk to like about two bucks assuming it's like a port they're selling uh in that respect it'd be six times that so 12 bucks for a loaf of bread well it could just be that milk in this world is fairly easy to come by but they don't have enough Go to arable land to make wheat in order to produce bread. Uh, that's partially what I was getting at. Either, either that, or since if a lot of their uh, food effectively comes from hunter gathering because monsters are very abundant, apparently, uh, <laughs> considering how many of them we uh, we see on the way to anywhere. 
uh, agriculture may just be lagging behind because it's uh, necessary and is just basically a luxury good. I mean, we know they have small farms because we've been to one, but... 